Hello friends, welcome to Mathi Botanical Gardens, which along with Nichols Arboretum is part of the University of Michigan. My name is Kathy and I would like to introduce you to one of my favorite trees on the Sam Graham Trees Trail. Come on! And here's the tree I'd like to tell you about. And here's a fun way for you to discover its name. As part of the Sam Graham Trees Trail, many of trees have signs like this one. If you have a piece of paper and a pencil or a crayon, you, you can make a rubbing like this. It's a tulip tree. And here is what its leaf looks like. Each leaf looks more or less like the image I just made. It has four lobes and one main vein going right up the middle. I think the leaf looks a little bit like a tulip, but that's not where the tree gets its name, as we'll see in a minute. This tree has a very straight trunk, and if you notice as we look up, there are no branches for a long time. Native Americans used to use these trunks from trees bigger than this one to make dugout canoes because the trunks are the right shape and because the wood inside is easy to carve out. In fact, when European settlers first came into areas where the tulip tree grows, they called this tree canoe wood because they were familiar with the Native American canoes. The bark on this tree is what I think of as both rough and smooth. There are no deep grooves and no big pieces flaking off, but when I run my hand over it, it is definitely not smooth, somewhere in between. Under the bark is the wood, and for some reason, when I rap on this wood, it sounds hollow. Let's get really close and see if we can hear it. There, could you hear that? Pretty cool. So we know why the tree was once called canoe wood, but why is it called tulip tree? Well, because of its flowers. The flowers are shaped much like the tulips that we see bloom in the spring. I brought a picture with me because these trees bloom in May and June, and the flowers are often hard to spot from the ground. Look at the beautiful colors. Each flower has six greenish yellow petals, with a splash of orange in the center. What do you think the reason for that splash of orange might be? If you think it might have something to do with insect pollinators, you're right. If I were a bee, I would head straight for that splash of orange, and there I would find lots of sweet nectar. In fact, there's so much nectar there for the bees to make honey with that some honey is called tulip tree honey. Yum! But of course, the real reason for a flower is to make seeds. After the flower is pollinated, it makes a fruit that looks like this. It looks kind of like a cone made up of individual seeds. And as you can see, each seed is attached to a papery wing. What do you think makes that papery wing so important? If you'd like, you can join me in an experiment to find out. I'm going to use materials that you will probably have at home, and so you can click the link below and give it a try. In the meantime, happy trails, and I hope to see you out at Mathi Botanical Gardens soon.